Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and today I'm excited to be unboxing Dawn of the Zed's third edition. This comes from Victory Point Games and was fulfilled as of a recent Kickstarter, which is really exciting. This game has been revised a number of times, and you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of this game box, it was actually nominated for the best solo board game in 2016. So 2016 was quite some time ago, but this third edition is brand new and fresh for 2019. I'm really excited to see what this game has in store as I never had the chance to check out the first or second edition of this game but heard good things. And I can't wait to open this thing up and show you guys what to expect inside the box if you're looking at picking this one up. But anything that has a board game geek seal, especially relating to solo games, is something worth looking into. So without further ado, let's flip this game over, take look at the back of the box, see what we're getting ourselves into, and then we're going to unbox Dawn of the Zeds. Things are far from good in Farmingdale. Some kind of virus or poison is turning ordinary people into vicious zombie-like killers. You must lead citizens and emerging heroes to halt the Zeds' advances by re-killing them. Attempt to coordinate the discovery of a cure and preserve as much of the area and as many of its inhabitants as possible. There there's no time to lose. Dawn of the Zed's third edition is a cooperative States of Siege board game where one to five players play heroes that must defend Farmingdale and its five outlaying villages from the encroaching horrors. These Heroes are supported by civilians, some of them are armed, some heroic, and what little outside help is forthcoming. You must prevent the Zed's incursion from reaching the town center or causing so much chaos around Farmingdale that the government abandons it and you. Now, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the box, the game contents are all laid out here, as well as the time it takes to play, the number of players, how old you should be to play the game. So without further ado, let's flip this thing over on box it and see the components that come inside Dawn of the Zeds 3rd Edition. So when you first open up Dawn of the Zeds, you're going to be greeted by a Victory Point Games Premier Line catalog. There is a bunch of games from Victory Point Games that I actually highly recommend. Uh, one of them for sure is Nemo's War right here. Renegade is another one. Those are the two out of these four I'm seeing right now that I definitely recommend for solo players. I played them myself and really enjoyed them. Also Darkest Night 2nd Edition's one that I did on the channel actually quite some time ago and enjoyed as well. So there's three really good ones and this is actually going to be the fourth one in their line of products that I've looked into and I'm really excited for this one even though it is a zombie theme and yes zombies have been covered in multiple other games before it's the game and the actual rules and mechanisms built within this particular product that I believe make it stand out more so than other zombie games that we've seen and come to find out are typically just kind of more thematic dice chucking bash everything in sight type zombie games. I believe there's a lot more going on in this one. I'm excited to show you guys that. So you can see here the basic rule book for the game is another book you'll run right into when you start it off. And of course it yells at you, start right here, even though it doesn't uh, greet you all that nicely. But first off here, we've got game equipment, the story so far. Well, the story so far is pretty thin. There's no time to lose. And that literally describes the situation. Introduction, getting started, you're setting up. Your table of contents is listed right there, and you've got yourself right into the basic gameplay and how to play, moving right through the sequence of play with rule number one. It's gonna go through all that stuff goes through fate draw and fate events. It's gonna take you through all the steps of a typical game round. So it appears that there is gonna be some reading in this one. So if you're curious as to how many pages this first booklet takes to get through, being that this is the basic one, this one is about 19 pages. So 19 pages to get you through with the reference sheet on the back here as well for the sequence of play. I love this, I love having that because once you get through the uh, quick play book, Booklet. I don't you need to look inside of it too much after that really everything that you'll need to remember that's important should be on the back of the book that's the way that I really truly kind of expect games to be printing their rule books these days is that keeping the most important flow of the game on the back and I really appreciate that um, but again once you've got these 20 pages or so down, you've got the basic game rulebook covered. Then you're gonna be moving to the level up rulebook, which has advanced rules involved. So with this particular one, 
again, it's just taking it to another level. Now, I'm not 100% sure just yet how leveling works, but it seems like there are particular levels of this. It even says right here, the basic game, rulebook, level one's outbreak, level two, apocalypse, level three, brains. So again, I don't know the structure of the game just yet as I'm unboxing this for the first time, but it appears like things really kind of ramp up. And this one right here starts you off with level one outbreak is what it says here in the top left-hand corner. And then it goes in for new rules. So again, things to kind of build upon from that basic rule book and all that kind of stuff. But again, you only have to digest that first one to get going. So again, this particular rule book, if you're looking for the number of pages that you have to get through to get through this one is about 21, so about the exact same amount. So 21 for the level up rule book, and that's the advanced rule. So about 40 pages or so, and you've got the rules, the full rules covered, but you only need 20 to start playing. Then we have the A to Z's book, Comprehensive Rules. Wow, there is a lot of books in this game. This is insanity. I didn't realize there was actually this many. And this is a really thick one, by the way. So taking a look at the back here, 41 pages on this one. So that's... That's got some serious heft to it. So again, there's quite a bit to consume in that as well. That's actually quite surprising, actually. So this one, I don't know if it builds upon the other ones or not. This one, I'll read it out for you guys about this rule book. This manual is not for the faint of heart. If you are new to the universe of Dawn of Zeds and you want to be sure to learn each level of gameplay as it is intended, please return to the basic one and uh, and the level up rule book. Um, the rules in this book are intended to provide a cohesive rules set that encompasses all the levels and then includes some finer details to answer rules questions. The rules details that involve particular units or markers are addressed in... Okay, so essentially this seems to be kind of like, you know, you're experienced with the game, head to this thing. But before then, just focus on the very first book and the second book. Again, first book you can get going. So... That is quite a bit going on right there. Next one right here, we have Dawn of the Zeds, third edition, the Farmingdale Dossier. So confidential book. Again, a little scared. I don't want to spoil anything here, but I'm going to quickly kind of rip through it. So this is probably story driven. Yep, looks like there's some potential story elements going on there. So that's kind of interesting. Very, very cool. It doesn't look like a rule book to me, more so... Uh, something that maybe what that is actually is probably specifying what certain icons mean and tokens are. This actually might not be something that's uh, secretive. It looks like it's actually talking about specific uh, items and components. So that actually could, looks like it could be really, really useful. So flipping to the front page here. Yeah, it looks like it covers disease spreaders, status markers, units, and unit types, super zeds. It did say confidential, so I got a little worried that there might be spoilerish, but it sounds like that's really just summing up some of the components in the game. After this one, you run into this book, this setup and epilogue book for third edition. Okay, so another book here. All right, I think that's where it ends. All right, so this one here must be... Okay, so this is like the... Yeah, yeah, okay, good. So this is going to show you how to actually set the game up. But at the very end of things, I'm not sure. So introduction, this book provides setup and victory conditions for the different game levels included. Uh, these levels are introduced in the order they should be played. Each level presents new rules and units. Okay, so you're playing through this level by level. So there'll be a specific level from one of the earlier books. You play through just that. So you don't have to consume all of this content. It might seem really overwhelming with how many books there are, but you really are going to go through it based on selecting your level. So you start out with the basic game. Keep things simple, learn the game. Then move on to level one tackle it, try to win it, go to level two. So it's about a progression essentially in terms of. Um, layering on the rules and things like that. So this particular book, in terms of the number of pages it actually runs, is about 15 pages or so. And you can see there's like a losing by card, losing by, oh, that's craziness, winning. So there's different, that's nuts. There's a lot in here. This is really interesting. I, I'm going to have to dive into this to find out more about the structure of this one. And you guys that have played this one already, uh, you can let me know in the comments below whether I had the right mindset in terms of how this is working. But it seems like you're playing this level by level makes the most sense. I don't you want to dive into the deep end of the pool to start. Uh, the next thing you run into after all those booklets is you're going to run into the game board. So how about we go ahead and just unfold the game board so you can see it from a top-down view. Alright, and here is a look at one of the sides of this double game board that comes in 
inside of the box. So you can see here, like at the town center, you've got a jail. You basically have a full highway leading up to the town center and all these different areas like Farmingdale's over here. You got the university over here. You got forest tracks, farms, exits, lucky strikes. So you're gonna be bouncing all around this world, trying to salvage it, save people, get cures, just survive in general. This is only one side. So I'm gonna flip this thing over to the opposite side so you can see what's going on the back side as well. There's also some tracks here that I've just noticed. So action tracks here, supplies, ammo. So you're basically, you're literally tracking how things are going straight off the board, which is nice. Infection levels as well, all the way up to what looks to be a really disastrous 13. And uh, wow, there's just a lot here. The game board itself might look really massive, but it's actually on screen. It's quite actually average size. So it's not overbearing. It's not gonna be something you need a super large table for. Literally, you could play this on a computer desk. It's it's quite small and compact in terms of its size, which is nice to see. It's not a humongous sprawling map that just gets a little bit uh, you know over the top in terms of its iconography. It also seems to be pretty easy to consume just looking at it. So let's flip this thing over and see what it looks like on the other side as well. So being that you're going to be playing this game through different levels, my guess is that it's going to have you going up against this thing on two different sides. Things change in this one, of course. You've got a tunnel track here with red labs that's going up through the middle that you didn't have with the other one. Again, I don't even know which side you start on to begin, but it does say side B right here, the other side side A. So my guess is you're probably starting on side A to begin things, and then maybe as things become more advanced, this kind of bottom section flushes out a little bit more. The structure up top looks to be exactly the same, and really what adds in here is this red lab section that wasn't in the other one. So that's kind of where things change. All the tracking that was here disappears. So again, things become more advanced as you progress along. Moving right along to the tokens in the game, you can see there's a bunch of sheets here filled with individuals, likely heroes, civilians, of course, zombies down the middle. You've got other tokens for statuses and conditions along the bottom here. So this is considered uh, the counter sheet one of three. This is the front side of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over so you can see the back side. Again, I'm not gonna bother trying to explain all this, because I haven't played the game just yet, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. So that is the first sheet. Here is the second sheet you can expect to find inside the game. So the tokens look really colorful, easy, uh, easily identifiable. It doesn't look like there's gonna be any problems trying to see font or uh, numerical numbers on them. Uh, they look really vibrant, so they'll probably pop off the game board pretty easily. Flipping this over to the opposite side looks like this for token sheet number two. Lastly, token sheet number three is actually quite small. And uh, again, I don't know, maybe during the Kickstarter, token sheet number three is the new tokens that got into the game. Maybe it's not. It's a smaller token sheet, uh, but maybe these are the ones that are added afterwards. So you got Civic Authority, Explosive uh, Devices, Emergency Broadcast. There just seems like there's gonna be a lot of really cool events going on this. And I, I got this feeling from the community about this one that this was a very interesting experience, a very a very good one to solo. And I can, I'm kind of getting that feeling as I go through this. So as you move into this section, I'm not too sure this might pertain to... So this looks like it could be for side B because that section that disappears still needs to be tracked. Yeah, that'd be my guess. So this looks like this is a representation of what disappears when you go from side A of the board to side B, you lose all the tracking ability. So you kind of need somewhere to do that. So they provide you with this for that purpose would be my understanding. Moving along here to the player aids. So you've got the Zed's player aid here. It's gonna help you, looks like it breaks things down into hand-to-hand -hand combat, gunfire attacks, combat procedure. So that's good. It's got the sequence of play, like everything's on a player aid, which is great. I love reference cards that do this because you don't have to dive into the rule book every five seconds trying to figure out what's going on. Everything here, symbols wise, and everything is all laid out, so that's fantastic. And then of course, player aids. You only need one if you're playing solo, but there's one for everybody if you're gonna play with more. So really, this is all you need in front of you uh, as a player, plus the, uh, the Zed's one, of course, and a similar symbol key on the back, which I imagine is quite similar to both. Yes, the backs are actually carbon copies, so really, just the front side for new information. You've also got Ziploc baggies in here for zipping things up. You've got yourself some standees, three of them it looks like. And we've got some dice hiding up here in the corner. Looks like these are kind of regular D6 dice. They don't look to be custom or anything too, too special. They're probably average. I wouldn't say that they're uh, anything more than that. They're they're probably just good. They're not, uh, 
just by looking at them at a glance, they look okay. They're nothing exciting. I do think for games like this, it would be really cool if they went the custom route. I really do appreciate games now that actually go that extra distance to make dice, especially if it's something you're going to be rolling in the game, kind of custom made to the game at least. So that would have been nice to see, but regular D6s are good. The gameplay is more important. The mechanisms are more important than what the dice look like. And we've all, we all know that. Uh, so we've got four different decks of cards in here to go through. So let's go through them one at a time and see how this looks. So we got the first deck of cards here, whole bunch of cards. And I'm guessing these are all going to be narrative driven cards. Maybe they're specific to different characters you're going to run into in their backstories. Maybe they're the, even the heroes. Who knows? I'm not 100% certain just yet, but there is a whole bunch of them. All kinds. And then if we flip them over to the opposite side, you can see here like the VFW Local 12 Heroic Civilians. So you've got cards. Yeah, it actually does look like it's pertaining to specific uh, individuals. These could be the heroes you're actually controlling. It could also be individuals you run into in the world. That's going to be for me to discover as I go through this, trying to figure out the differences between the two. But uh, hey, I don't see zombies, so these got to be good things. And they're more of the larger cards that sat in the bottom left-hand uh, corner here of this particular insert. So... These seem to be kind of on my side of things rather than the Zed's side. So these are the different individuals within the game. I'm kind of ripping through them at a relatively fast pace, but hopefully it gives you a, a decent look at the artwork within the game and what they're doing there. So they're not putting a major focus on the artwork, more so on the abilities and the breakdown. So that's good because you can figure out all the abilities on these giant cards uh, for whichever character or thing you're controlling. So that is that deck of cards, which slots right in that insert right there. The other thing that's really nice is these inserts are more than big enough for sleeve cards. That's one thing to note. So if you're into sleeving cards and you're worried about the insert being useful, it's useful, believe me. There's a lot of space there. You could easily get away with whatever brand of sleeves you want to. There's a good like half an inch or more of space on either sides of the cards there, which is really appreciated. This next deck of cards, the one from the top left, is the event deck. And I'm guessing this whole thing is full of events. Yep, not surprised in the least. So let's flip these thing over and take a look at some of the events here. So a hero arrives. And again, I'm not going to speak to anything here in terms of icons or what's on the card, but I can show you the artwork and just the title of the cards. We'll go through them so you can see kind of what kind of things can potentially happen to you out here. And I doubt that any of these are necessarily good things. Uh, it's got tough Zeds, well-armed civilians. You gotta be kidding. That does not sound good. That sounds like a really bad one. Right beneath our feet. What's that smell? National Guard Rise. That's pretty cool. Brains. So yeah, lots of them have to do with, uh, you know, airstrikes and like, individual, you know, the Zeds coming out of nowhere from different levels taking you down. Wandering Zeds, Zeds that are under your feet, under the floorboards. Quick Zeds. Like every type you could possibly imagine. Nervous breakdown. Yeah, that's probably how most people would be feeling in this situation. Um, all kinds of stuff going on here. So now again, I'm, I'm, I don't know if the events trigger once every round of every game or maybe they trigger based on what you do and, and where you go. But there is quite a bit here. That deck is a decent size just within the base game alone. So that is that one. Now we're going to move over. And I really do appreciate I like this insert a lot. It's basic. It's not like over the top fancy. But like they even thought about putting your thumb. They even have room for where your thumb goes to pick the cards up. Like it's just really well thought out. There's so many inserts that are basic inserts that are not over the top but they don't do simple things like that this they really did go the extra mile to think about people actually trying to get the cards out of these inserts i really do appreciate that so let's go to the next deck of cards in the row now these cards are called fate cards and i don't know if they're all fate no they're not only a few of them and then it goes oh more events so there was more events than even what i thought in that original deck Wow, okay, now I don't know when it's going to change over, but we'll go through these one at a time. So contamination at the hospital, so we're still talking events right now. <clears throat> Again, they're going to end up, I'm going to end up putting them on top of the other deck over there. But there is more than I originally thought, which is cool to see that. So a whole bunch of event cards here to add into the pile. I'm guessing that the actual later of the cards will change. Looks like they've already changed. No, they still haven't. So the end, what are these end ones? You want a piece of me? It's time to nut up or shut up. Game over, man. The nightmare is finally over. All those sound like things I'd really like to see in an event. And we're still in the events. Wow, okay. Disaster at the labs. Are we still on event? Yep. 
Yeah, and again, I'm not too familiar with what the stars symbolize. Maybe it's the level of difficulty. That kind of makes sense. Green, yellow. <laughs> yeah, green, yellow, and then uh, red. But uh, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure about that. It could also be a level thing, right? Like maybe when you're playing... Oh, that also makes a lot of sense. Maybe only certain individual... Uh, depending on what level you're at, maybe only certain cards are included. So if you start level one, maybe you only deal with simple things versus growing despair and stuff like this. So that, that actually makes a lot more sense if that's the case. So here we go. I think we're moving into fake cards now. So this is kind of what they look like. No, in this case, it says like play this card, place an infected vermin standee on the start space of the track where there are most said units. Uh, until this unit is removed, plus whatever that means, looks like Zeds at the beginning of every infection phase. So it just sounds like bad, bad, bad things. Fake cards don't see. Oh, there could be something to play this card when a player unit begins hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, so yeah, there's positives. Fate has positives and negatives, so it's a mixed deck, I think. So that's, I guess, a good thing and a bad thing. So uh, that'll definitely throw a curveball into the game for sure. So there's a bunch of those. Artwork looks pretty good. Definitely thematic for sure. They nail the look and feel of a zombie game. That's for sure uh, Again later on I'm gonna break these cards out into the right com uh, Compartments, but right now we have one more deck to go through and then we finish off the unboxing So let's go ahead and do it So the back of this particular deck of cards starts off with some National Guard cards and heroic civilians so maybe for every group of different types of uh, civilians and individuals in the game there's a reference card for them so that seems kind of cool we'll see more about them when we flip it over to the opposite side late research there's cards here that are mixed with early and late and they're just there's tons of them so there's a whole bunch and then it hits this card here dpc commission so it says this card sets up in the research discard pile you begin you begin researching the cure. Oh, okay, so if you, oh, that's kind of cool. So you're trying to actually cure things at that point. And then more fate cards. So similar to the other one, it kind of carries over. So we're starting with the fate and then moving into the unknown. So, oh, bridge collapsing, that does not sound good. Downpour, a man with no name. Gruesome bonfire. So many, so many cards. <clears throat> liquid courage, yes. You're definitely gonna need some liquid courage in this type of situation. Tunnel ceiling collapses. Yeah, we know there's tunnels on the map, so I guess there's certain times where those will get sealed off and you can't move through them. That's really cool. Sir wipes a lot. Is that an actual card? Sir wipes a lot. Wow. That is a card and a half. Throw something at them. Yep. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so here's the DPC commission card on the end, on this side here. Research materials needed. So now we're talking about cards that have early research on the back. I don't know how this works in, but maybe this is as you try to get towards a cure. Uh, you need materials, of course. While this is the current research card, you may spend one supply instead of one action to conduct research. It looks like you're rolling dice to try to hit successful results. So that's where the dice come in, I guess, is when you talk about research. So, you know, that's where I could have easily seen, if that's the case, if dice are used for combat, which I'm not sure of yet, it looks like they're definitely used for research, then, you know, something like having the pips changed over to beakers or something would have been really thematic. But again, I don't know if they're used for combat, then that wouldn't really work. Um... But uh, I just I just really enjoy the standard now that it seems to be that most games now have you know custom dice. I've got, any game that has dice, I just enjoy that. And this is the opposite side of these cards here, which is interesting to take a closer look at. So disease spreaders here, you got specials, you got your saving roll, restore order, stack limit, player controlled. So these are very interesting for each of the different major groups. And I guess we'll be I'll, I'll be referencing these as I go through the game. And they all have different specials, of course, different uh, answers to the major questions across the top. There's your heroes. That's important. So the heroes look like this. Now I'm learning some of this stuff as I go through this disease spreader. So this actually can help you when you go through those tokens and, you know, determining what is what. So this is very useful. And that's going to conclude the unboxing for Dawn of the Zed's third edition from Victory Point Games, a board game geek, golden geek nomination for best solo board game of 2016. Definitely worth a look in the solo community if you haven't already checked it out in the past. This edition being the third one is the most refined. I highly recommend that you check this one out and hope that this particular video aids you in understanding what you can expect to find inside the box. Thank you guys again so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo.